Uh, Adam Wallen, I'm the CEO at, at Veer. And I'm Tim Heidel, I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Veer. Uh, Veer is developing a next generation power transmission system based on high temperature superconductors, allowing for more power through existing rights of way. Every decarbonization study that's been published in the last two decades indicates that we need to expand electricity transmission networks dramatically in the next 30 years. Many of those studies indicate you need to double or triple the scale of transmission capacity, and yet transmission is only becoming harder and harder to build over time. Nobody likes tall towers and wide right-of-ways disrupting pristine landscapes. Today, uh, traditional conductors are metal or metal composites, and they have thermal limits. So when you want to put more power through an existing right-of-way or a cable, you are actually putting heat, producing heat when you send that energy through it, and the thermal limits of those metals are the melting point and sag. So by using high temperature superconductors, you are allowed, you can put more power because you have zero resistive losses and you're not producing heat energy. Veer seeks to unlock the capability to transport large amounts of power over long distances using high temperature superconductors. In our case, we're using a novel class of materials that has substantially lower resistance, and we have an active cooling system, thus we can push a lot more power through the exact same amount of space, and really limit the amount of new space that's required to expand transmission. High temperature superconductors have been under development for multiple decades at this point, and there are a class of materials that when you, when you cool them below a certain threshold temperature, they cease to exhibit resistance. That allows you to transmit, transmit a lot more power through those conductors relative to conventional conductors because you're significantly reducing the amount of heat that's generated. Historical high temperature superconducting transmission deployments have really been limited by concerns over cost as well as reliability. And a lot of those concerns at their core relate to the design of the cooling systems themselves. Historically, these systems have used liquid nitrogen and relied on a temperature change for liquid nitrogen in order to extract heat. And unfortunately, that architecture required the duplication of refrigeration equipment roughly every five to 10 kilometers of line length, which really limits the applicability of the technology over long distance. There had been a proof of concept work done historically on uh, leveraging the phase change between the liquid and gas phases of liquid nitrogen, and some of the early results that we were able to find indicated that that could reduce cost and improve reliability dramatically. And that's really the technology that we decided to pick up and adopt and, and start developing at Veer. So we founded Veer uh, on the basis of the need for expanding transmission and new technologies in transmission lines. Um, it was after a deep dive looking at, at the future requirements out of 2050 um, for decarbonization and the realization that two have a higher degree of penetration of renewables that are remote, um, new transmission capacity had to be created to bring that remotely produced power to load centers in cities. Veer was founded in late 2019, and the very first work we did is really to kick the tires on the core concept and do a lot of modeling and analytical work, and that was really the focus of our seed round. The results of that enabled us to raise a Series A round, which we closed about a year ago of $12 million. And in the Series A period that we're in right now, we're really focusing on hardware demonstrations of the core cryogenic components. And we're, we're aiming to stand up an integrated demonstration of all of the cooling components required to achieve our vision for long distance, high temperature superconducting based transmission lines. The, the real world application and, and what our vision for Veer is, is to eliminate the necessity for um, not in my backyard. So you would, you would see a Veer system uh, deployed just as you do conventional lines today. And in fact, our development process of the product, designing the subcomponents that enable this cooling and using of high temperature superconducting cables would look exactly the same from the ground when you pass a power line that would be a Veer line versus a conventional line. Veer's developments in using high temperature superconductors versus conventional conductors allows for five times the amount of power through the same voltage class and the same right of way. This allows us for a higher cost entitlement and being more economical at scale than conventional lines. Also allowing for an increase in capacity 
in constrained right-of-ways that conventional conductors would not be able to compete. Early on, Veer's, Veer's transmission lines will rely on the same uh, industrial gas supply chains for liquid nitrogen that are utilized by refineries and food processing facilities and hospitals. Ultimately, we may find that it's more economical to put on-site generation co-located with our transmission lines. In development of power lines, whether that's in a regulated environment with a regulated utility or a merchant development model, uh, there are many stakeholders when you look at projects to be deployed for high temperature or any high voltage power line. So the stakeholders include consumers, um, the real customer will be the utility or the merchant developer, um, but we have to, and we already have begun, to make um, contacts and communications with both regulators and legislators at the state and the federal levels. Utilities have been adopting technology for many, many decades and today operate one of the largest machines that man has ever created and achieve some of the highest levels of reliability anywhere. Obviously, with such a system and a safety conscious industry, adoption of new technology is always going to be challenging. Uh, ultimately, it'll, be, it'll require us to deploy pilots and to deploy proof of concept systems and gain the thousands of hours of operating experience that will be necessary in order to gain wider spread adoption. Our, our early portions of the company were really proving the science. The, company that, the phase that the company is in right now is reduction to practice and de-risking the technology. Our next phase of operation in 12 to 14 months will be in product development. Um, all of those critical steps of the company have demonstration projects, proof of concepts, that are milestones of proving both at where we are right now, which is the overhead cryogenic demonstration, um, which proves our core technology. The next stage as we're in the product development phase will be a high power, high voltage demonstration, and that will be our pre-commercial stage before our next and final commercialization of the technology grid tied as a project. As we're developing the technology to commercialization, Veer will explore its business models, its route to market, and that will determine how much capital is required ultimately for the company to be commercial. Um, you know, there is options for for public finance and underwriting those first deployments. If we go into a merchant model, we would need to then figure out project capital to deploy that, which would mean a pretty significant amount of raise. Just ballpark um, a traditional, conventional high voltage transmission line to develop, construct and deploy is about a million dollars a mile, and an average transmission line is 40 miles. One of the largest challenges that we've had since starting Veer, uh, in, in all honesty, in the economic climate that we have today, starting it and founding in COVID, has been recruiting and hiring people um, it's, a, it's a hard tech development. Uh, we can't do a lot of the critical uh, developments, experiments, building out our test beds. That can't be done virtually. So human capital, really qualified people with experience, has, has been our largest hurdle. We're seeking to deploy technology in an industry that is extremely safety and reliability conscious. And there's an extremely high bar for new innovations to achieve both the safety and the reliability requirements of all of our customers. It is a hard tech innovation, and we're gonna to need to generate a tremendous amount of data and experience in the field to really gain the credibility required by the industry. We know this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. Uh, it's a very tough industry to innovate in, uh, but ultimately the size of the prize is, is large enough. Our, our foundation of the company was on the ability to accelerate decarbonization and the penetration, the successful and efficient integration of renewables into the grid. Ultimately, our vision for the company is really long, high power lines that will actually allow for load shifting of renewables. When the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining in some places, we want to be able to send that power with effectively very little or negligible losses long distances. We're excited to be solving a problem that is truly global in nature. Our focus as a company isn't purely on North America, but really there's an urgent need for transmission development all over the world. It's a really exciting space to be working in right now.